well. So, if you, oh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Audhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If you, as a woman, don't have a village, right? You don't know what to do. You're nervous, which is the case for a lot of modern women. And in a lot of Western countries and a lot of war widows across the world. And if you find yourself in this position, I want to give you hope because you can do it. You can take care of your children even though you don't have a village. And historically, sociologically, anthropologically, it would make a wonderful exercise for you as a woman to go through and look at was there really a village to help raise every child? And is that wise to always defer responsibility to others? Now, the village talking point that is used refers usually to women having a support system while they are raising their children. They're in the newborn stage, right? I have often talked about on my blog and shared screenshots of women talking about how they should have celebrations for new moms and help her to clean her home during, you know, the, the newborn stage, bring over healthy meals, offer to watch the toddler and the other children while she rests with the baby. I find that to be quite helpful, quite wonderful. Okay? I support stuff like that. But I, what I want you to know as a woman is if you do not have that, this doesn't mean you go and get an abortion. Asalaamu As Alaikum, same into skyoti. So recognize that you do have the strength in you. It's sort of this primal urge that you have to take care of your baby. Now, I know from experience how difficult it can be. Mind you, I don't have a mother-in-law to help. I don't have my own mother to help. I don't have any grandmother to help. I don't have any in-law grandmothers to help. I do not have a father who helps at all or even calls, or really cares. And I have a father-in-law who doesn't speak the language and is living in the rural, like my husband's family all lives in rural Mexico. So it's not like I can call on them to help. They are distant, right? So. I also, my friends, they've moved away from California. They are not here. You know, some have in college, they've gone on to their careers. They're gone. And the remaining friends I have from childhood, they've left um, where I grew up with them in Utah and have moved to other states and they don't live in California. So I don't have a friend network. So. I practice what I preach, essentially. So I know what I'm talking about because I have to do it all myself. Now my husband, he helps, but he's at work, right? That goes without saying. So I have to do everything with my first child. I had to do everything myself. There was no breaks. And with my second child, I have my eldest to help when she can, but during the day she's at school. So I have to balance, you know, handling side hustles, cooking meals from scratch every day, handling house chores, uh, making sure I keep in touch with, you know, kith and kin, and doing the little de good deeds that I do with, um, in, in other regards, right? And making sure that I do my prayers and my day is tight. Right? But I also find time for relaxation, so I know different strategies. AZ says, being alone in the path of truth is better than being with a crowd going the wrong direction. Well said. And so, I just was hoping to give some women reminders that you may be afraid. You may be thinking, well, how can I possibly raise this child if I don't have a village? And the truth is, 
You can start your village. You can start your tribe. That is the way in which I look at it. I look at it as a sort of opportunity to test myself and to reset family dysfunction, right? So if you find yourself as a woman alone, like what I mean by alone, I don't mean necessarily single mom. I mean as in it's just you, your husband, and that's pretty much it. You will have most of the burden of the child rearing while he's at work, right? And postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis, these are very dangerous, uh, temporary trials of the mind that mothers go through. Okay, and some brothers, they may marry their dream girl, and she may be struck with such a debilitating temporary mm, trauma, right? She, she, she's had a difficult time. And she's struggling. And I wanted to just reiterate some of the coping habits and strategies that I mentioned before. That can help you feel some of the pressure leave your chest. Because there is a lot of... How do I put it? There's a lot of people who constantly talk about brothers' rights to polygamy. But very few talk about uh, how to help and support your wife during the early stages. Fatima Abbas says, Assalamu alaikum, Mulan. It's been so long since I've been on your platform. How have you been? How's your little one? I pray you're all doing great, inshallah. Uh, I'm glad to see you back. Glad to see you back. Yeah, I don't always do live streams that much anymore. Everyone's doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thanks for asking. Shug, the OG to the channel. Assalamu alaikum, Mulan. Thank you for sharing your time and knowledge with us. Glad you have are staying safe from all the freaks out there. <laughs> I know, right? California. You remind me when my grandpa says the same thing, man. So funny you say that. You just remind me of my grandpa because he says the similar things when I talk to him on the phone. <laughs> it's funny. Yes. Oh, and to mention, you know, that when you have just yourself as a mom, you don't really have the community because remember, there's a lot of broken families now. And I always try to talk about uh, how you can use social media in a positive way, your smartphone, for coping skills. So while you're nursing your baby, you have ocean wave sounds on. I, ha I would watch cooking shows. I've sh if you go to my culinary arts uh, playlist, you will see there some videos I've shared, right? Some have no talking. Some are just travel, okay? Even sometimes I'll watch MK Ice and Fire's gameplay where he doesn't talk. He just plays the game. And like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, The Last of Us, Avatar Frontiers, stuff like that where they're playing and I can watch it and I can relax. Okay? So what I'm trying to point out is you, and also a lot of virtual hikes, by the way. That is very helpful. So when you're breastfeeding, you know, 2 a.m., 5 a.m., 3 a.m., whatever time, right? Everyone is sound asleep, your eyes are burning, you don't know how to stay awake, you have your tripod, you watch like that virtual hike of beautiful scenery, something like that. It doesn't have talking so it doesn't wake and distract the baby because you want the baby to go back to sleep. So you can't have too much talking because sometimes that the baby will let go from its latch and stare at the phone because of the noises it's making concerning words. That's the pattern at least I notice. So, virtual hikes, um, ASMR cooking channels where it just features the cooking, those can really help. Because you're keeping your eyes focused on something so that you don't dip out. Because it's so hard sometimes. When you are the only, like you don't have a grandma to like relieve you, right? Because remember, when you nurse the baby, sometimes you have to rock the baby to sleep. So if you don't have someone there who you can hand the baby to, to rock the baby to sleep after the feeding, by the time you get the baby down, you know, it's two hours sometimes, right? So the sleep deprivation can cause extreme psychosis in some women. Uh, very dark thoughts, okay? And there's mommy groups 
if you have a Kaiser Permanente health insurance, if you have access to Zoom, which most people do, you can get on an online mommy's group where you can get some motivation, ask questions, stuff like that. So there's help out there, okay? And remember, if you message me on my blog, I will do my best to kind of let you vent or you ask questions, something, whatever it is. So you can feel here, can feel heard because some people don't have a close relationship with their sister or their aunties and they need some feminine energy. This helps moms not feel alone and can help them calm down. Because when the little innocent baby is crying and right, they're scared of this world. You know, it's a hard life to be a baby. Okay, it's very difficult. They're pooping on themselves. It's dark. It's scary. They want to be next to you. They want to hear your heart breathe, breathe. Like they want to hear you. Like they just want to smell you. They don't want to be away from you. Like my baby was like a, a little chimpanzee. Like she liked to be on me. Okay, there's some babies who, they're like, oh, I want to explore the world. And then there's other babies who are like, you have to put me in a little carrier, and I want you to wear me. And this can be hard for some moms who aren't ready for that. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad Nuradin. Very good, how are you? Alhamdulillah. And this is uh, hard for some women to handle. So you need to decompress, is my point. Now, some people would call me crazy because I would read. Me doing my videos on my YouTube channel was a stress relief because I love learning and it made me feel human and have a sense of steadiness and accomplishment for the day besides my regular chores and whatever right and the reading i do off camera but even though i was so tired i chose to use that time in something that i love so it's very important like when i do my videos usually it's when my little one is in nap time right and this or she's on a jog with her dad with the sports stroller so this helps me to feel centered, okay? I want you as sisters and brothers who are going to get married or maybe your wife is struggling right now with postpartum depression or postpartum psychosis uh, to know that there are there's help out there and there's techniques, okay? Now I've talked a lot about aromatherapy, okay? These little things you can you may over when, when you're strong, mashallah you don't, you don't notice how much your environment affects your mood because when you are depressed, your body is like exhausted. You don't have a mom to help you or a trusted person and your husband's gone. You're alone and you don't have a help. So you need some uplifting. You need, you need to know, okay, what's going to help me? And there are things you can do as well with when it comes to food. So, let's say you like boba tea. Get yourself a DoorDash boba tea. Let's say you like a little Earl Grey. Make sure you have your little cup of tea. Another one would be having a, something on hand that's sweet. I eat a lot of raw honey every day. So, I probably eat per month who knows how much raw honey. But... I just eat it like that's my thing like that's a habit I you know my because I talk a lot soothes my throat it's wonderful lots of nutrients so you can find something when it comes to food where it's special like you make yourself a little appetizer whatever it is you know a bagel with cream cheese capers tomatoes something to comfort you because food is comfort food Shook says, these little comfort foods go a long way towards giving new mothers that feeling of being normal again. Exactly. Yes, yes. That's, that's my point. Is um, For a while, like, okay, I was still trying to lose weight. Mashallah, I've lost, I mean, personally, I think, a lot. Like, Because I gained over 50 pounds with my pregnancy, so I had to lose that, right? And when you have a baby that's nursing every two hours and you have no energy, it's quite difficult to work out. Still, though, I would have a little cheesecake or a little donut or a chocolate chip cookie. You saw my things. I was still baking and cooking, you name it. But I would still give myself a treat because I have to decompress. 
And if you're alone, like I'm trying to mention, you don't have a village, okay, to help you, a family network, a support system, you have to know yourself. This is why it's so important to know thyself, okay? A woman, when she's pregnant, she might think, okay, everything is going to be easy sailing. You know, I've stayed up late typing an essay before, so, I mean, how bad can not having sleep be? But see, when you're fresh giving birth, you have like a high from giving birth. You're like, whoa, this is, this is intense, right? And then you fall asleep and you're in the hospital or you had a home birth, right? But a week goes by, two weeks goes by, now the, the, the pressure is setting in on your chest, right? It's hard to breathe, chest pains, maybe your blood pressure is too high, you have something like that. It, it's it's different it's very different so you need to find ways to fix that you have to figure out and study your psychology Muhammad Nur Adin says I have a daughter who is 17 years old she's afraid to wear her job because of her security I don't know what I should do with her hmm Does she, you must find out who is she afraid of and then you can find out more solutions is it the atheists? Is it the other Muslims? You have to find out what is she what is she what repercussions is she afraid of? You have to figure that out and then you can formulate solutions. So know that even if you have a you're an experienced seasoned mom, I've heard stories because I pay attention to what a lot of women write. You know me, I like to read. And even on some women who have five kids sometimes it hits them hard the depression shook says and when you try everything burping gripe water diaper changing and they're still crying it can be frustrating that requires extreme patience exactly yes now the gripe water for colicky babies right i didn't know that babies could be colicky if they were breastfed because my first child wasn't colicky my second child yes she was i didn't know what to do i would cry i was like I, I was wondering why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why is my baby not falling asleep she's crying my husband would lose his patience with me He'd be like oh just rock her or do this and I'm literally doing that and I'd be like listen us arguing isn't gonna make the baby calm down I'm doing everything I can so it was difficult but I would just sing rock her rub her face uh, uh, lay her on her back bend her knees to try to get the gas out and it was really difficult, but I, you know, I'm thankful and I would think in my head, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me this baby who cries like that because she'll be safe with me. It was, it was, I, I really do believe this. I felt something. I don't know if there's something in Islam that says that. I don't know. Maybe that sounds new agey. I'm not sure. But I felt like she was meant to be with me because I have a lot of patience with her and I had mercy towards her. And she was a, she still is, you know, a baby that has, she, she, she's a fussy baby, right? And I really uh, would pray sometimes for other mamas to have patience because I had to deal with that by myself with no relief. And I made it. Alhamdulillah, now my baby, she, you know, she, she's fine. They grow out of it. But when you're, with the purple crying, they would also call it too. You have to get through that as a new mom who's fresh, you know, fresh with it. And I had my C-section hurting and it was a tough time, but I got through it. And I do feel like I became stronger because of it. Because that level of pressure, it, it, it was intense. So that's why I focus a lot on coping mechanisms. Because I had to learn different techniques with my second. Shook says, one of our babies cried so much. I just started reading to her and she stopped and listened. Don't know what damage I did reading the kid, the dead zone. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool when you figure out the really interesting things and make a baby calm down. You know, that's, and that's another thing. There will be really unique things. That will distract your baby, entertain them, soothe them, and you have to figure that out and remain calm. 
this live stream was inspired by that short clip that was put on Twitter slash X from a TikTok of a woman in deep psychosis where she's a threat to her baby and she is cursing and screaming at the baby, which is highly inappropriate and uh, quite dangerous because I was going to do a news story the other day about a mom who put her baby into the oven and it, and it ended the baby's life and the police asked her, why did you do this? She said, I thought it was the crib. They left out two things in the news story. One, was she on drugs? And two, was she in a postpartum psychosis? And she's, it, it didn't say how much time she's been given because she hasn't gone to trial yet. But when I see stories of women harming their babies, and we know some women don't have the ability to ask a family member or a trusted friend, they need to have constant reassurement of breathe, uh, have a view of outside, right? Like, I'm blessed by Allah, I have a view of the sky, of trees. I hear my birds. I uh, have great herbal teas. I, that, I like, you know, sip a little tea, calm down. I have things I can draw, I can paint, I can do, create some AI images. Little things, right? Some that. Uh, same Menascotti says constant reassurance exactly and so my point is is some days your wife may be going really well and then one day you come home from work and she just is gray and she's frazzled right we want husbands and wives to stay together the way a husband responds in this deep moment of necessity can can make or break them right because a mother remembers who was there with her in the trenches okay and i never heard any male in my family talk about women going through postpartum depression okay it was a nurse in the hospital in fact who even taught me how to change a diaper and i always thought to myself you know, we have a lot to work on in our broken families. So, I don't just assume that every new mom understands the risks of postpartum depression. And when you go to the doctor for your checkup, they ask you, like a survey, like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, alhamdulillah, I'm alright, I'm hanging in there. And they're just checking you, you know, see if your stitches are fine. You know, stuff like that. They give you an exam and then you're on your way. Right? They give you a couple pamphlets and stuff like that. So, the blessing of the social media is that you can reach out to women who have a lot of knowledge. Right? And so, I really hope that I can be a resource for sisters because I know from experience what it can be like. Now, I've, I've, I've learned even more patience when it comes to Islam. So I've, I've never had something as scary as that lady's psychosis. But I do know what it's like to uh, say to yourself, okay, i got to figure something out. All right. I need to go do some stretches. I need to sit in silence, do some deep breathing, turn off the lights, you know, have a very dim light and just whoosh, decompress. Whew. Right? Put your feet up against the wall, flow, have some tea, whatever it is. My point is, you gotta focus on strategies and communicate with people. It's very important for a husband, if he comes home and he says, how was your day, right? Sometimes a mom thinks, oh, he doesn't care. I won't tell him. I, I won't tell him how I'm doing. You know, I don't want to bother him. He has stress from work. She shuts down. She needs to communicate to her husband. I had a hard day today. Can you help me? Right? So she can she can ask for more help from her husband in that way. Fatima says, you'd be a great counselor. Oh, thanks, sister. Samim Askoi says, my mother-in-law is Scandinavian having difficulty living like Muslim in Western society. Oh, Scandinavia is a very different country. That's 
I am not sure much about that culture. Shook says absolutely so many ladies feel Abanero, can you can you turn off the timer? Oh, I forgot I put a, a timer on. One second. I got it. I just have a sorry fam. <laughs> I have a squash a butternut squash in the oven and it's not done yet but I just put a timer on uh, because I wanted to make sure you know that it's doing okay it's a nice butternut squash <clears throat> we'll eat it with uh, salt pepper and butter uh, for dinner so I just had to go turn that alarm off but anyways <clears throat> my point is is the woman has to know to communicate and not feel broken by saying I'm having weird mental thoughts I feel weird and this is weird and I need help because shaitan really comes hard at a mom oh look at your body oh you can't go out oh you, you whatever it is thoughts come and if she doesn't have somebody there at her side to fight away those thoughts and pep talk her, motivate her, she might resent the baby. And this is a very scary thing. So we have to help these women and create content consistently talking about things that relate to that. Because we want women to love their babies and not every woman is nurturing. So some women, they have to be reminded gently and motivated to not give up, not resent their uh, postpartum bodies, to understand that it'll be lonely for a little while, right? Because, you know, you can't always have friends over, so you're going to have to learn how to be content with your own mind, have things to think about, journal, blog, have a garden, you name it, have a hobby, interests things like that and this will help you so because for example some women would be like why would you read I, I could never stand reading i'd rather take a nap i i had a lot of insomnia so even if i wanted to take a nap i really couldn't you know not till and not 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 really till the night time so even if I was super tired and the baby was napping, I'm like, I'm going to read. I need to draw. I need to do something that is going to make my hands move, my, my thoughts go. So that I feel productive, as I mentioned. Right? Because if a woman's just wash dishes, cook, take care of baby, poopy diaper, you know, do that around the clock, things start to feel like lost in the sauce like she's not her her new identity is harder to adopt because she isn't having any sort of relief or uh, decompression time so you can also watch bushcraft videos now if you're not familiar with bushcraft videos it's like men i've never seen a woman do it men go they go into a forest they start building huts fishing there's so many great channels, subhanAllah. I have a playlist, but I haven't added to it in a while. But there are wonderful bushcraft channels where you can watch a, a guy build a cool shelter, uh, a dugout, survivalist. Oh, I survived this many long stuff. Or uh, foraging for mushrooms, uh, spear fishing, something like that. Shug says, sometimes I would wake up and see the baby wide awake next to the sleeping mother. She'd be blinking, contemplating whether to cry or relax. I thought, for the love of God, no! <laughs> yes, yes, yes! That is so true. It's so cute. The babies are like, what am I going to do right now? You know? It's so funny. Yes, it's so cute when babies do that. Sammy Scotty says, Yeah, a lot of those channels are from like Australia and Cambodia. Interesting. Yeah. I like the ones that are in the snow the most, like Alaska, like there's one called Outdoor Boys, uh, they're pretty cool, because he takes his kids sometimes, and you're like, oh, and then there's really rugged ones, like, 
something the North. Uh, oh man, Age of the North. Age of the North. He's like a. I don't know what. Maybe Swedish. I don't know, Icelandic, something. But he does a lot of outdoor videos, and that's pretty cool. But I've saved some. I follow quite a lot. So as a mom, you can have that on in the background, and this can help you. Now remember, when your child is under the age of one, they're very, very, very needy, right? When they're learning to roll over. Like, my baby had to always see me. If I put her to in her bed, in, her, in the baby basket, she would scream and scream until I came out of the bathroom. And this was hard because it limited me in what I could do. So I had to read next to her. So I would lay on the floor. I put a blanket down, put like a the rolling firm pin. Like, it's like a yoga pin. Like, you know, the foam rollers that you use in the gym. Put that behind my neck, put my feet up, and then I'd read next to her, and she would just chill and stare at me and suck her thumb, and be totally happy and play and, and baby babble, and I would read next to her. So that was my solution, you see. So I ha and like when I pray, she has to be next to me or she cries the whole time. So I had to figure out, okay, I have to put her in the playpen, then I have to take my prayer rug, try to face toward the Kaaba. She has to see me, and now she's at the level where she sees me praying, and she's totally chill. But in the beginning, she would cry if she couldn't see me, and it made focusing on prayer difficult, but with time, she learned, and it's fine. Right? So, when you're a mom and you're like, how am I going to figure out how to pray? How am I going to find time for myself? I have uh, no friends to help me. I have no family to help me. Oh, why did I get pregnant? Like... I don't want any more kids. Like, these thoughts will come to you, but you have to remain positive. Shug says, Some babies just feel. Never leave out of my sight. Only to get irritated when parents do it when they are older. The sweet revenge. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So, just remember that there are going to be coping skills you didn't even know. Right? Okay, another example. I would watch macrame videos. I'm not good at macrame. There's embroidery stuff. There are things that you can watch that stimulate your brain and don't make you feel overstimulated. Because when you've heard crying all day, your ears and you have like a massive headache, you, you'll be surprised that what well, your brain starts to crave as relief, right? And so, excuse me, I'm going to wipe my nose. It's a little runny. And so, it's important to figure out what your coping skills will be. Shug says, and about coping skills, mothers learn they can be stronger than they ever thought they could be. Exactly. Yes. So, it's okay if you have a moment where you've cried. Like, But remember, to ask your husband, uh, can I, I would like to take a shower. Is there anything you need to do before I take a shower? And then he says, like, no, I'm fine. You give the precious baby to him, right? And you go in the shower. I'm telling you, get you a nice handmade soap from Etsy. It's very soothing, like a goat milk soap. And just hot water or cold water, whatever the weather is, right? Relax. Just nice. I And also, if you can, get you a high-powered shower head. I have a high power shower head. It literally feels like sometimes uh, I'm in a rain cloud and like, uh, what you call that? The the water hose of the fire department, <laughs> you know? <sighs> like the pressure on your muscles is nice, you know? So if you get a high, they're not expensive. Um, you can find, okay, you know what you should do? If you have a friend that's a plumber, they can show you where the knob is like, I don't know to increase the water flow there's some science to it but we got a, a guy to change our water pressure and then we changed the shower head to adapt to the flow and this really helped so try that it helps 
Jake says, my wife unironically purchased work, workers' noise-canceling ear protectors to block out the crying when it gets too much. Smart. Very, very smart. I had earplugs uh, for when I, I would hold her and she the, the screams a colicky baby does will can, can break you down because you're not doing anything wrong. Clean diaper, fed, changed, bathed, right? A warm bath. And it's just waiting off the clock, and then they slowly fall asleep, and everything's fine. But when the, when the sound gets deep into your ears, and you're like, your body's reacting. Like, sometimes a mom's milk will come in, and it'll start dripping. Because of the, the body's responding to the baby, and she's like, oh no, I'm, I'm leaking. The baby's crying. The, the other children are upset. You know, no one can sleep. This is, oh no. Like, it can be very difficult. It can be overwhelming. So, canceling headphones can really help because you're still there, you know. Boop, 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 you know. You're still, like, doing your thing with the little one. But it'll help uh, to relieve some of that piercingness. Because our, our bodies are meant to hear the baby, but it, it can be so overwhelming. Oops. Uh, Shug says, one of the most sinister acts of creation is the baby that cries to fight sleep. The horror of those moments, but we made it through. It's very interesting that the babies, they get overly tired. And then they, uh, they fight the sleep. It's, it's, it's really interesting. But it, it, the, the overtired cries, you're like, wow. That's why when you establish a nap time, you get into that, it can really help. Now remember... I'm not trying to judge. I never did sleep training. I don't believe in it. Where you leave the baby to cry, they go really exhausted, and then this kind of like gives them strange coping mechanisms. However, I I've only done it a couple times where there's a when the, my baby was older, and she's more mature, and she's having a tantrum, and then you're like, okay, you're having a tantrum. You're gonna go in your bed. I'm gonna close the door, and then you realize five minutes later they're totally asleep. But like a one-month-old, a three-month-old, they don't have that ability yet. And some moms, they will just walk away. Like, my mom did that. My mom really believed in that. She would be like, oh, if you're overwhelmed. I, like, we would, we'd had a little disagreement. But I think that's why, like, on my head, like, I don't know, there's a little flat spot. And I sometimes wonder if it's just because my mom was like, using drugs and just left me in the playpen and in the basket you know I don't know but uh something where the, there was a thing like that back in the day where moms would just leave them and it was very sad I don't know about sleep training but I tried to make adjustments to get a sleep schedule it can be useful for baby and mother yes when they're of age right like you operate your life but I know there was some women, like in the 80s, the 70s, like they would literally just leave the baby and deny it food. I've watched some interviews on it. It's like the whole psychologist wrote books on it. And some people study it and say, you know, it changes the, the brain patterns and the trauma response of the kid. Who knows how true it is. But I would like, if you're about too angry, yes, put the baby down. Go have a breather outside on your patio. But but what I mean by that is some moms will not go soothe their baby when the baby needs it, right? So I'm trying to help motivate you sisters to that to know there'll be times where you just put the baby down. You finally go to have an, a, a, an orange munching on an apple and then 40 minutes later you hear the baby cry you got to go back in put them back to sleep and you lay down finally in the night and as soon as you fall asleep you hear the baby and you just want to cry and you're like oh how can I get through this when will it end but know that you are doing a merciful deed by caring for your baby and, and comforting them because they would need you they want you and you are all they know. You are their hero. You are their guardian. And 
loving them and sacrifice for, sacrificing for them will make you stronger. Okay? So, if you don't have a village, don't think, Oh, I can't have this baby. I'm going to get an abortion. Right? And remember, do not drink. Do not smoke weed. Do not use pills. Do not turn to substances. Okay? Because there are way, way too many women, unfortunately, in America, who go to intoxicants to help with their coping skills. This, this is dangerous for the baby, pollutes your breast milk, and doesn't make you stronger. Some women will smoke weed, the weed's getting around the baby, they say, oh, the baby won't remember. It doesn't matter. You're putting smoke around a baby and you're high. Stop it, right? Another obvious one, says Jake, is to have homeopathic remedies in your house as well as other natural remedies for when they become unwell. Yes, there are, uh, excuse me, pardon me, wonderful uh, different teas, uh, extracts. There's books you can also buy. And there's a lot of homeopathic well-researched people. I've been drinking a lot of like chaga tea, turkey tail tea. I've been eating uh, more herbs. So I've been really getting into even more nutrition and stuff like that. So I highly recommend that mamas do that and then learn how to incorporate that into their life. Because you may not always have access to baby Tylenol or Pepto-Bismol, you name it. And you're going to have to improvise. And think about how did the women get through it before, right? I also recommend having a heating pad. That is very helpful. And making sure you have very comfortable breastfeeding pillows. My husband was very kind and when I came home from the hospital he bought me a very fuzzy like robe. It's very important for mamas to have a shower robe and then a hangout robe because that soft fuzziness is very comfortable, nice fuzzy house slippers. These may seem trivial, but being comfortable in your nest is very important for your psychology. You don't want to feel alien in your own home, right? Jake says, a good book for that is the Nourishing Traditions book of baby and child care. Perfect. Mashallah. Thank you for the resource. Thank you for that. And just remember, comfort, coping patterns, things like that, this can really help. Now, some people get very tired when they have pets. Uh, they kind of fall apart. But I'd argue... A pet can help you to be motivated to get up out of your bed, right? Like my birds, I love them. I'm a bird person and uh, looking at them was wonderful. If I, I do want a fish tank, but I obviously I have to study more. I had a fish tank once, fishes got ick and uh, I wasn't able to study as much, but I do hope to have a very nice fish tank in the future one day and I do love koi fish but I'm not able to have a koi pond but uh because I love watching the way the fish move in the water it's very therapeutic so find a way to be around animals because being around animals is very soothing for new moms it truly is it truly is like if you got to go walk the dog and take the newborn you getting outside is, is very very helpful trust me Shug says as a father I came to realize who essential I was in helping my children's mother and the child. It was great being a dad and I wish more followers had that opportunity. Yeah, mashallah. Hopefully they will. It's so important. Uh, it's, some people think it's not masculine to help your wife out, but if we want people to stay together and, and a man is a leader, he has to help his wife when she's struggling mentally so that she doesn't harm herself or the baby and it's quite common and it's very incorrect for any man to assume his wife will never have a weird moment because we want to be preventative we want to be solution based we don't want to dismiss 
potential dilemmas and problems, right? If we have an action plan, we can help more marriages stay together, create less trauma for children, and make women more motivated to have children and keep having children. In the age of eugenics, of anti-motherhood propaganda, of boss babe attitudes where they feel like men are not important and children don't need a dad and stuff like that, we highlight how men play a significant role in the mental health of their wife, especially for her recovery after such a miraculous a set of her life, which is childbirth, child rearing, right? So don't lose hope is my point for the women. Don't lose hope. Fatima says, I had two of my three babies with no family, friends, or neighborly support. Hubby works in another town for most of the week. Being a mom of kids of different ages and needs is just, is, is like being in a blender. You, you can feel like that, definitely. You can feel like a whirlwind. There's like these aches and pains. And what's fascinating is w we have, I would argue, the highest right now that ever in humanity of not having a support network, right? So it's important that moms create content and conversations around the necessities of the new system. Fathers play a significant role in, in helping their wife, right? Because not everyone has a mom. Like, I, my mom has bipolar disorder, so I am not going to let her babysit. Okay, I'm not going to do that. She has mental freakouts. She's unsafe. My dad, constantly smoking weed, smoking cigarettes. I'm not going to allow that around my children. And my grandpa, he's blind in one eye and walks with a cane. And he's not healthy enough. He's old, very old. My grandma has dementia. So she can't really be relied upon. You see what I'm saying? And they live far away. But... Even if I lived close to them, they wouldn't be able to be a help. So, it's important to know that you can do it, Mama. You can. John Miller says, will you consider getting tattoo free? It draws smiles on babies' faces. Get tattoo for free. What does that mean? Would you consider getting tattoo for free? It draws smiles on babies' faces. I don't understand what you mean. I don't get it. But, uh, again... It's important to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recording your good deeds with how well you take care of your children. Okay? Don't think it doesn't go noticed. Do not think you won't be rewarded. You, as a mom, who are sacrificing everything for your children, nursing them, making sure their diapers fresh and on point, they had a bath, you are creating a safe, clean environment. This is a blessing. And you are doing remarkable work. Shug says, just having some small meaning hobbies can give you a good out during nap times. Distressing and more. Spot on. John says, you should get a tattoo, sister. Uh, uh, we can't get any more. I have tattoos, but I got those when I wasn't Muslim. I don't need any now because... Women who have too many tattoos have a lot of mental trauma. And I'm not trying to look like a, like a rock star. Like an emo goth chick. You know. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be... I, I, people who get... Like uh, Tom McDonald, that rapper. People who like... Or like Lil Wayne. Like people who get a lot of tattoos. They have some pain in them. You know, you gotta watch out. Shook says, ladies walking around looking like a ZZ top video. That's not needed at this time. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what I mean? But, um, just know I'm available on my blog. Do not send any messages towards Instagram. I don't use that app for DMs. I post and I look at, you know, pictures of nature and stuff on there or whatever. Instagram... The times I have used it, I send a message, the person, they screenshot it, they show me it didn't show up. I send a screenshot that their messages haven't showed up. I think it's a form of censorship. 
for Instagram to not deliver messages. I don't get it, but it's suspicious and I don't trust the app, right? And it doesn't, it's just not right. I don't get it. It's really suspicious, really suspicious how constantly messages are not being delivered and this creates a problem, right? And I and I and there's so many bots, so many scammers who send messages. I don't want to communicate through Instagram. And there's always people trying to hack my page, so it's like no point in that. At least on the blog, I can use my keyboard and type longer messages. On Instagram, I gotta use my thumbs. Doesn't work. So, uh, and also people will message like back in the day and then they don't respond and I wasted my time you know they ghost me and I'm like you messaged me I'm invested in your problem and then you just ghost me and it's like okay whatever so at least if you join the blog you paid to be there and I know you're serious so I know it's not a waste of time you see what I'm saying right so keep that in mind but if you're ever having a moment where where you feel like okay I want to discuss this hobby or something or you, you you are getting into a hobby and you want to share it with somebody I'm always there is my point because sometimes you get into a hobby and you want to talk about it like I have a routine as well all in the morning I'll listen to the PBD podcast and then in the afternoon I'll listen to Timcast and because they don't really swear too much or get vulgar and so I have a routine, and then during the day, I'll have like some Islamic stuff, but I produce a lot of content, but not too many Muslim channels produce a lot of content, so I run out of content. You know, it's really quite strange. Because we as moms, we, have, we, we can utilize our time well by having educational things going all day. I, and I do that. So that's why I try to always make content and diverse content so that moms and people who are on the subway, they're commuting, they have something to look at, right? You know. Uh, Sami Skodi says, that means, no, we don't believe tattoos are halal. In other words, they are not allowed. And so, just know you're not alone. And if you have to have the numbers on hand that you can call if things get if things get squirrely okay you got to protect yourself you got to be smart okay super important super important and remember don't allow your mind to go to too dark of places if you're getting too dark of thoughts, you need to get some fresh air. If you live by the ocean, like me, you go hear the roars of the ocean, feel the cold breeze on you. If it's raining, let those raindrops touch you. If it's, if you're, like if I was living in the snow, like old times, I would lay down in the snow and let the coldness touch my body. If I was, in the heat, I would take a different approach, right? Take a cold shower. There are therapeutic measures you can take to help your mind to relax. If you have a hot tub, like my one of my dearest friends has a hot tub. So you can turn on the hot tub, go there. If you have access to an all-female gym that has a little bit of child care and you want to do that, do that. Just know, like, okay, another thing. There are beautiful tall trees where I live. I can go sit with my baby, have a blanket, and go sit under a tree and relax with my baby, right? You can do that too. Sitting under tr by trees or sitting on the beach and looking at the roars of the ocean as your baby plays with a rattle. There are things you can do. You and your husband have a get buy some sushi and you go to the park and you relax you lay on the blanket with the baby there okay let me give you an example one time me and my husband all of us right we took we had a we went we got some blankets 
went to the park, I laid on the blanket with my baby, and my husband had the MMA uh, fight pads, and my daughter was doing sparring with him, karate, you know, taekwondo sparring with him in the park, and I was holding the baby and watching her do exercises of sparring with her father. So we spent some time like that together. So whatever unique situation you have for your family, look at it. And don't don't think, oh, that's not good enough. Because every little bit helps. Okay? Every little bit helps. So you have sound stimulation or sound canceling headphones. You can have... You, maybe you want to buy some more plants to put inside your home. Okay? Rearrange things. Let's say you had an old blanket for a while on your bed and you found a pretty one and you wanted to freshen it up, right? And recycle that blanket. Changing little things in your environment, having aromatherapy, this can really help. Trust me. There are so many techniques. You just got to find what's good. If you have campfire, like some houses have a fireplace. Take a good book, read by your fireplace. I literally wish I had a fireplace, but I didn't have a fireplace, so you know what I'd do? I would go on YouTube, 4K fireplace, ASMR. Type that in, put that on my computer, read, and I could hear the sounds of, a, of the computer or fireplace. You know? Th that's what I did. So if you have a real one, the smell of the wood, the sound, the heat, wonderful. But if you don't, use a virtual way. So what I'm trying to do here is spitball as many things as possible so that you can get ideas too and brainstorm and think, okay, how can I avoid staying and being crippled by postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis, and depression in general as a mom, right? Fatima says, and if you can't go out, get yourself lost in a good book. Exactly. Like, I have my educational books. And then I bought, like, uh, Prince Harry's Spare. He has a book, right? And I was like, I went to ask my husband, can we go to the bookstore? And he said yes. So we went to the bookstore, got that book not too long ago, and then I got another book about prisons, Rikers Prison, which I want to do on the channel. Almost done with it. And it was just a story about prisoners and whatever. So I got a couple books out of my usual genre just to have something different. And like, okay, these are the books I read when I'm with the baby, when I'm relaxing, right? Stuff like that. That really helps. So I got lost in those good books. So I'm like, exactly, you're just a good point. Shug says, these are great strategies. Thanks, mashallah. Shug says, that feeling of isolation can be daunting. So people heed alter need alternatives. Yes, yes. And it's very important for uh, young couples and even seasoned couples to know this. And I've mentioned uh, in my series I'm doing more on grandmother ideals, how grandmas, when we get older, we need to be there for our daughters. And that's why I really think it's time for people to start having their families closer together so we can support each other. Because, inshallah, I plan on being there heavily for my daughters if they are blessed to have children. Inshallah. So that they are not alone. Uh, John says, do you consider dyeing hair gray with children as good family activity? Dyeing your hair gray? Uh, I'm not sure why you would put your hair gray and not let it go silver naturally. No, I don't know. Mm, I don't know what you mean. I mean, I don't dye my hair. Be you know, the chemicals, the pneumonia it can be pretty strong, and if you dye your hair at home, it gets on the floor. It gets on the walls, and you're wearing the plastic gloves. I don't know, and that's I don't know. You should pay a hairstylist if you're gonna do that. You know, they got to work too. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think my kids would find that very fun. If I'm going to... We would paint or color with crayons and color pencils. You know, that's what we do. 
uh, but painting anybody's hair no we're not into that really so I don't know maybe you could do that but I'm not really into that but uh, yeah so think about as I was saying little things you can do and uh, when my toddler is older I'm gonna do more crafts and I will show like little videos of craft stuff that I do with my toddler now my eldest she does knitting she, she has her own hobbies and skills right and I've shared a couple of clips of her doing that but with a toddler when they get older you know you do like little uh, fish you know like they go to kindergarten and they bring home adorable little creations right so hopefully inshallah like a, they'll do like a pasta necklace a fruit loop necklace you name it and so these things can also help a mom not to feel depressed when she starts doing crafts with her baby with her children right Shuk says the first time we learned how to paint we got more on the floor than on the canvas but we got better when we learned <laughs> yeah yeah that's why my desk is covered in paint you know I remember my brother-in-law he said ya chingaste like oh you you effed it up your desk and I was like hey it looks kind of feng shui you know <laughs> you know she says, my favorite are the drawings they bring you and you have to guess what on earth it is. Like, can you tell? They always ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really great. MashaAllah. But, um, again, I will do more videos in the future, inshallah, and on my blog. I'll do some posts, just maybe some things on Instagram. But I, I, that's why I like to talk about cooking a lot on Instagram. Because cooking is therapeutic for me and it might be for you as well. Okay? And when I'm washing the dishes, uh, I have a podcast on, so it's it's not so bad, right? So, anyways, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. I'm still fundraising for my bookshelf. I'm still fundraising for that wood panel. So if you'd like to contribute to that, you can you go do so on my blog at www.subscribestar.com slash my home archive. I'm not monetized on any platform, and I don't have a join or a, a button thanks button and i don't have super chats so if you want to help out the channel and you appreciate the content you can do so via the blog subscribe stars nice because it's not political like patreon uh they don't uh, ban people really easy like patreon does so it's a great platform so far and that would be the best way to do it and take care fam let me know what you think in the comment section thank you all for tuning in i appreciate your time and have a good day Just like I have.